Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the works of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. Over $102 million has been invested in youths of the Maruka Sub-District in Region 1. This massive sum goes to 285 Community Service Officers, CSOs. We also have an investment for those CSOs in terms of stipend for the year is $103,320,000. Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport, Charles Ramson Jr. revealed that the Cricket Academy at the National Stadium Providence is slated to be completed before year end. He made the announcement at the opening of the Maltinos Cricket Academy on Monday. Minister Ramson said the investment in the facility will revive the level of the nation's cricket potential. I'm building at the National Stadium an elite academy for cricket in <laughs> I expect this to be finished before the year is completed where it is usable. Obviously over time you'll want to make you'll be able to make further investments, further improvements. But we have never had a cricket academy facility in this country or one that's sustained throughout the entire region. The bidding period for the construction of a bridge across the Quarantine River is likely to be extended to allow more persons to apply. Over this last couple of days, um, we have received correspondence and engaged through engagement with Suriname and some of the bidders, they've been requesting an extension of time for the submission of their financial proposal. Despite several setbacks, work on the much-anticipated Cemetery Road project are continuing and government anticipates a thoroughfare will be completed before year-end. One of the reasons for the delay in the project is unfavorable weather. All of us would have seen and known that the drains in the Cemetery Road alignment have been consistently flooded and waters from the burial ground have been coming in. We have sought some engineering interventions of where to dispose of the water to be able to get it done. They have tried several different um, avenues. In the past three years, critical investments have been made in the healthcare sector to enhance services. These include more access to medical equipment, major upgrades to health facilities, training opportunities, and the use of technology. We would have given, apart from the, your regional budget, we would have given each RHO at least $100 million to help with the upgrade of infrastructure in your regions. So you got $100 million last year, you got another $100 million this year, and we are going to give you another $100 million per region so that we can look at improving uh, accommodation for staffing across these different regions. Further, the minister indicated that Guyana is prepared to handle any possible case of monkeypox since the country can boast of having the capability to test, diagnose, and treat the virus. Minister Anthony made this statement in response to the two reported cases of monkeypox in Trinidad and Tobago. And we have activated our systems to ensure that if anyone uh, comes with those types of symptoms that we'll be able to manage it. We do have uh, surveillance at our airports and uh, at the border with Brazil, the border with uh, Suriname. And we do have um, port control as well. The Radiation Safety and Security Amendment Bill was on Thursday passed in the National Assembly to promote safe use of ionizing radiation. To ensure the objectives of this bill are achieved, an independent regulatory authority called the Radiation Safety and Security Board will be established. The board collaborates with relevant government agencies to ensure that activities and practices involving ionizing radiation and nuclear energy 
are solely used for peaceful purposes in Guyana. Individuals allocated house lots at number 75 Housing Scheme Phase 1 in Region 6 have signed their agreements of sale. It paves the way for the processing of their certificates of title. We don't do signing up of the agreements until you have been given the necessary access to your land. And so we have reached to this point. Potentially there are about 200 allottees on this number 75 Phase 1. And following this process of your signing of your agreement, you also will be able to move to ownership. That is for you to receive your certificate of title. And that is what we do at Housing 2 is to ensure that the whole process is complete. Additionally, Minister Kroll and Minister of Public Service Sonia Parag on Tuesday engaged residents of Mukka Arcadia on the regularization of a plot of land. However, the plot of land, which consists of five fields, is currently owned by the Guyana Sugar Corporation, Gaisuko, and as such, a transferal is needed. Once this process is completed, the Central Housing and Planning Authority can then move forward with the regularization process and residents can be granted legal ownership of the land. In regularization, there are two things that has to happen. One, we have to be cognizant or we have to take stock of where persons are and so when we're doing the design, you have to have road networking because you have to have access, you have to have drainage, etc. With Guyana aggressively moving forward to achieve clean and treatable water for all its people, Minister of Housing and Water Colin Kroll noted that the Coastal Water Treatment Program is expected to meet 90% by 2025. He made this disclosure at the media launching of the 32nd Caribbean Water and Wastewater Association CWWA, annual conference and exhibition on Friday at the Guyana Marriott, Kingston, Georgetown. Our coastal water treatment program, as you heard, aims to increase treated water coverage in Guyana. And when we say coastal here, we're referring for regions 2 to 6 and the Bartica proper for Region 7, where we're somewhere around 52 to 55 percent, to move this to 90 percent within or just under the next three years. This goal, we, have, we are so far constructing 13 new treatment plants and rehabilitated and expanding 13 existing treatment facilities. Farmers from several communities along the Maikoni Creek Region 5 were assured that they will soon have improved access to drainage and irrigation. This assurance was provided by Minister of Agriculture Zulfikar Mustafa during meetings with farmers on Wednesday. We had instruction to start the preparation for the Hope Lake Canal and you will have that. We'll start one in Region 5, Region 6 and then we'll spend another 50 million for the mangrove in Region 2. Boom three large projects for the agriculture sector. Further, Guyana's agricultural and food systems have been repositioned and transformed to become more competitive, diverse, modernized and resilient. As we work to achieve the SDGs, particularly SDGs 2, Zero Hunger, Guyana has aligned our national development pathway to focus on priority areas such as food security, climate change and agriculture financing. Residents of New Amsterdam and Caribbean in Region 6 will soon have access to better training facilities as two are being built in the towns. The sought turn in ceremonies for the facilities that together cost over $84 million was held on Wednesday. Both facilities will be 2,000 square feet and sport two stories. This um, ceremony, whilst it might seem simple, um, is groundbreaking and it's... Um, a game change in large uh, effect because Region 5, Region 6 will be exposed to a lot of new development. Uh, it will call, uh, that will call for people that are highly trained and technically competent uh, to function in a lot of the facilities that will be um, installed um, around here. And so we are jumping ahead, so to speak, <laughs> to prepare the region to, um, for the new development that will happen in the region and in Guyana. 
The Guyana Police Force hosted a two-day symposium with stakeholders that strengthened its practices, partnerships, and relationships with communities. In spite of the big negative jump at Madia, we perhaps still have to consider that there is a far way to go and that we have to ask ourselves, are we best suited for the job? Are we willing, able, and capable to do the job? Will we mentor and coach our charges, our policemen and women, and look after them too, so that this job can be done? Judgments and court orders passed in Guyana will now be enforceable in 60 countries as the National Assembly passed the Foreign Judgments Reciprocal Enforcement Amendment Bill. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Senior Counsel Anil Nandlal, emphasized the need for legislative framework to bolster international relations. No doubt a modern body of laws and an efficient, competent and impartial legal system are sine qua non of a vibrant, thriving and democratic society. This bill is part of that menu of modern laws that are so necessary for economic development and investment, in particular foreign investment. This brings us to the end of this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related stories, do log on to our website at dbi.gov.gy. Goodbye.